Now that we have a sense of amino acids and the, the monomers of proteins, we're going to get into protein functions and protein structure so that you have an understanding of what they do. Okay? And proteins are very important within the body. When we were talking about carbohydrates, they sort of did energy and some structural stuff, and that was about it. And fats have a few uh, roles. Proteins have many functions within the body, and just to name a few, um, they are enzymes, and these are incredibly important. You are uh, just a, a being that is chemical reactions happening all the time, all, all the time. And enzymes really play a, a key part of that, and we're going to talk about those specifically. They're involved in transport. The way you get oxygen throughout the body is using a protein called hemoglobin. And so that's one role of them. They are structural. All your collagen and ligaments um, are all, all the connective tissue within the body. You know, you hit the bridge of your nose there, and that is protein that you're hitting. Hormones, uh, specifically testosterone, estrogen, well, actually lots of hormones. I'm sorry, those are, I take that back. Testosterone and estrogen are not protein-based, but you have other hormones that are protein-based. Sorry about that. Um, sending messages throughout your body. Contractile structures, your muscles, uh, contractile proteins, what are called actin and myosin, actin, I don't know why this is so big all of a sudden, actin and myosin, you don't need to know those right now, but they make up the um, functional part of your muscle tissue, and that's pretty important. All right, so these are some of the roles that they play. You do utilize proteins for energy at times, but that's when your body's getting very desperate. Um, other things, your, your, the, your hair and your fingernails are, are protein-like products. Um, and your, your skin is waterproof because it's, it's called keratinized, and that uh, is also a protein. Um, so these are some of the functions. Now, as we talk about protein structure, I'm going to warn you, protein structure of all the structures we do is the most complex. So just be aware of that. We're going to take it step by step to understand. There's four levels of organization when it comes to protein structure. And you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and reveal them all. That it's not too bad in terms of uh, the terms that go with it. There's primary structure that we'll talk about. And then secondary structure. Tertiary structure, that just means tertiary is a word for the, the third level of structure. And then quaternary structure. And that, of course, is the fourth level, as you might guess. So those might be new terms, tertiary and quaternary. But they're not so tough that you can't pick them up. Um, over here, what we have, this is actually a, a computer rendering of what a protein looks like. They're very complicated structures. We don't really understand... Uh, exactly how to build them. Interestingly enough, they end up building themselves as you work through these levels of organization. Okay? And so you can see it's a, this crazy structure. But one thing to keep in mind here is that while this shape may look weird to you, it is specific. I'm going to do capital. Um, it is a very specific shape. And the shape of the protein absolutely determines the function of the protein. And that's a key idea, that whatever this shape is, and we'll see how that gets determined, determines what it does. You know, you can think of it as a tool that, it, although there's some uh, give here, a hammer has a specific shape. You know, we'll sort of make it like that. There's our hammer. That's not a bad hammer. And that is meant to hit nails into boards or whatever, okay? And that shape helps it with that. A screwdriver, on the other hand, you know, has got the, the end there, is meant for a whole other purpose, and its shape determines what it can do. In this case, you know, um, screwing things in, okay? And then a saw, and I could go through all sorts of tools. The Function is determined by the shape. Now, if I were to mess up the shape a little bit by having the structure wrong, we'll talk about that, the shape 
changes and therefore the function changes. It becomes either less functional or non-functional or in very rare occasions more functional, better. Okay, so keep that in mind that the function uh, is determined by the shape of the protein. So let's build a protein and we'll start with our primary structure. Very simply, the primary structure of an amino acid uh, is, I'm sorry, of a protein is the sequence of amino acids. There's the key phrase, the sequence of amino acids bonded together to form a polypeptide. Now remember, in a prior video, you would have seen that you take an amino acid, two amino acids, and you bond them together, okay? And that bond was called a peptide bond, peptide bond. So we learned that earlier. And now if you do that many, many times, you get a polypeptide. That is a chain of amino acids. A polypeptide is a chain of amino acids. Now, here is one. Uh, we can actually just expand this a little, just so that we can see it a little bit better. Okay, and what we're looking at here are just, just that, what we said, chains of amino acids. These are all amino acids bonded together in a long, long, long chain. Remember, it'll go on for, you know, hundreds or thousands of these. Okay, so that's what an amino acid chain looks like. Amino acid chain has many of these, and so we would call it a polypeptide. Now, this is curled here a little bit, but you can ignore that. It's just curled because they were trying to fit a lot into the picture. Okay, so if that is a sequence, and that's it. Notice, though, they've given the little initials here, and I can tell that that's lysine and valine and phenylalanine and glycine and arginine and uh, cysteine and et cetera, et cetera, and you go on and on. Those are all specific amino acids. So this, this whole chain is akin to a word, a polypeptide, and all of the individual units here are the letters. Okay, now I could change it and have a different sequence of amino acids and as we see, what would happen is I would end up with a different polypeptide. Uh, specifically, the shape of my protein would be different. And so it would be a different protein than whatever this is. So that's primary structure. Our secondary structure is a little bit more complex, as you might imagine. Is that? Sorry. Okay. And this involves a folding or coiling of the polypeptide. So we took that sequence, that chain, so this is our primary, uh, primary structure, and just very simply you can think of it as, well, what if that started to coil up? Now what would cause that to happen? And what would cause it to happen are attractions and repulsions, and I always like to say between the like part. So you go back to our amino acid and it had the COOH and the NH2. I'll just do it like that. It's not really a great way to do it. And our R group and our hydrogen. And so all of these parts are something that all amino acids have. And so those parts attract to each other. And they can either form uh, coils. You can kind of see a, a coil right here, and what's called, it's actually called an alpha helix, but that doesn't matter. Um, or sometimes it forms sheets, and that's what they're saying here, these broad sheets that sort of go parallel to each other. The point being is that there are some attractions based on the like parts of each other. Okay? Now, I often uh, use an analogy of a bunch of people standing next to each other, people with two legs, uh, actually it doesn't matter, um, and they all have something in common, they're all people, and imagine I take the whole school out to the soccer field and um, make them go through this. First thing I would do is just say, put them in a specific order, and they would tell them to hold hands, okay? The holding hands represents the peptide bond, and I could, they go on for hundreds of people, okay? Apparently that's Steve Benoit right there, very tall. Um, and it goes on and on and on. That would be like the primary structure. 
And then I use something that everybody has in common. I say, okay, well, now that you're standing next to each other, I'm going to have you just sort of hook, hook your knee around the, the person next to you. And it, I can't really draw this out very well, but, you know, you're, you don't really extend your legs. You just have those long legs to begin with. Okay, and sort of do that. And it's more complicated than that in a protein, but, you know, that starts to create this other linkage. Um, or maybe I tell you to do it, you know, to a person five down, and that would make things so you're all holding hands, and then this person has to link knees with a person over here, and this person with the next person. And so, you know, it gets this really complex structure, but that's not even the complex part. Attractions between like parts are, is a secondary structure. Now, what do we do with that? Next comes the third level, or the tertiary structure of the protein. Okay, <clears throat> probably should, let's do this in parts. And this is that you take that coil, so we had this, and then we coiled it, and now we bend that coil upon itself. Oh, pull that down a little bit. Okay, and it starts to get really messy. Now, if secondary structure is based on the attractions and repulsions of like parts, tertiary structure is based on our R groups. This is where that alphabet of amino acids comes in. There's attractions and repulsions between the R groups. Now, if you take that whole chain of people that we had, pull that down, chain of people, here's where I say, okay, now you're bent into this weird configuration of people. Now I want you to go and stand with you, without letting go of the two places you have. Go stand next to your friends. Try to get as far away from the people you dislike. And now that would bend into some weird configuration of people. You'd actually have to go three-dimensional probably. Okay? Um, let me back up just for a second. Okay? And, and so that creates a third level here. It, it creates a specific shape. Now imagine... If I said, okay, let go, reorganized you, and do it again, would we get the same shape? Probably not. A different amino acid sequence, in other words, primary structure, a different primary structure would actually result in a different shape of protein. Okay, now let's take a look at this. This is maybe a decent example. It's hard to tell. This just shows some attraction. It's not very complex. That almost looks like primary structure, but within this would actually be, this would all be coiled and sheeted. Maybe there's some sheets within here. And they're generalizing in this picture to say, oh, yeah, and then you have things like what's called a disulfide bridge, or you have a, tr uh, a hydrogen bond there, uh, attraction here. And then you get some repulsion. You get your nonpolar parts that probably get coiled up in, in one area. And you get a very complex structure. Proteins are complex. In some cases, this is actually the protein itself. It's just a single polypeptide that's bent and twisted and forms a specific shape. So we can be done. Or we can go on to our quaternary structure. I'm just going to open this up. And this is where you actually get two or more tertiary polypeptides com combining, apparently, Combining, combining, sorry, that's wrong, um, to form a full protein, a, a quaternary protein. And this, here, this is a great example, hemoglobin. That each of these units here, one, two, three, and four, represent a tertiary polypeptide. But they, they come together, they group themselves together to form the complete protein of hemoglobin. Collagen is another example where this has three polypeptide chains together. I can't quite track it, but that's okay. Um, and that's where we have our quaternary structure of that protein. So there's those four levels. I'm pretty sure that's the end. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, those four levels of proteins that are important for you to understand a little bit different than we've seen in carbohydrates and certainly different than lipids. But review this and you know, review your text. Your text gives a very simple explanation of it. And make sure you ask questions if you're having trouble with this. All right, great. So that brings us to the end of protein structure and function. And I'll see you later.